<clears throat> and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on tech we are of course broadcasting live straight out of stockholm sweden and we do the show each and every day at 8 a.m central european time guys today we have a truly mind-blowing episode because we have so many bullish news lining up after each other and it is truly fantastic to hear and it's tr truly fantastic to be part of this industry when we have all of this news coming out number one we're going to discuss Van Eck. You know that Van Eck is an ETF provider, an ETF issuer, and they have $50 billion in assets under management. Well, they have come out and said that crypto has bright future, Bitcoin has a bright future. At the same time, you see Visa recruiting to their crypto team, and they are recruiting permissionless people who know permissionless technology to their crypto team, meaning that they're actually working on permissionless systems, such as Bitcoin, such as Ethereum and others. We will discuss that. And then finally, we have a very important news about the largest retailer in Switzerland, the largest online retailer in Switzerland that actually now started to accept Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So, you know, being part of this industry, you are through a lot. You're through a lot of highs, you're through a lot of lows. But recently, there are many positive news, and we're going to discuss the significance of each of these news, and we're going to discuss exactly what Visa is doing, exactly what the Swiss retailer is doing, and why, and it's all about getting a deeper understanding. I mean, what is happening, but more importantly, why is it happening? What is the future, and what are the future trends? And guys, as you can see, I have a new haircut. Fabrice here in the chat was telling me that I need to get a haircut. I can even zoom in. W what do you think about my haircut? Let me know in the chat because the chat is crazy as always. I see the chat. I see Michael. I see Edmund. I see Nick. I see Life Size Box. Guys, let me know where you're coming from. Let me know about my haircut. And also, if you are excited, if you are pumped, hello from Afghanistan. Nice. Hello to Afghanistan. Smash the like if you are pumped. And also, before we start... I want to remind you that we have a free webinar and you really need to join if you haven't been on our webinars yet. You can find it in the description. It will be in one day and 10 hours, completely free. We'll be talking about how to make money in the bear market, how to build wealth without ma making risky investments and how to be involved in the crypto industry for real. So check the link in the description for free webinar. You don't have to pay anything. And also in the description, you will find this lecture about taxes that we will have in five days with a professional professional tax expert and you need to understand that irs is having new methods they have new methods of going after crypto traders and you need to get the knowledge in this video to stay compliant to really know what they're looking for and how you can stay compliant so check out that as well also looking at the market what do we have in the market we have uh, bitcoin at 0.2 percent we have ethereum 0.2 percent minus almost 0.3 we have ripple at uh, yeah so nothing really happened here binance minus four percent looking at the big winners 16 percent g exchange congratulations g, g exchange tezos 16 percent tezos guys really need some uh, green movement after all the drama that happened uh hobby 14 percent losers ABBC, yeah, so 20-14%, not, not that big of a loss, but actually it's quite significant if you only hold that coin, but still, it is not that significant. What is significant, though, is the following. We have Van Eck coming out and talking about the fact that Bitcoin is here to stay. And we need to understand how Van Eck is, think is thinking, because they are, of course, coming into the space from an institutional background. They're working with institutions, and they are an institution themselves. So, obviously, we need to understand that whenever an institution, such as Van Eck, looks at an asset, and they're interested in developing an ETF for an asset, because that is what Van Eck does. They develop ETFs, and they provide ETFs. They issue ETFs, and they actually try to do, and are still trying to do, a Bitcoin ETF. So, when they come into an industry, such as crypto, and they see all the craziness happening here, that we went from 20,000 to 3,000, now we're at 4,000, you understand that it might be intimidating. It might be intimidating to people such as Van Eck and to players such as Van Eck to get involved. Because obviously if they create an ETF and that ETF is for some random asset that nobody really understands and it can be manipulated, it will be bad for Van Eck. But so what's good is that they are very positive on Bitcoin. They are very, uh, very, they, they understand the deeper meaning of Bitcoin. 
they are really on the same page as we are. So if you look in this article that I wanted to share with you, they're basically saying that although we've been to 20,000 and then we went to 4,000, Bitcoin is not going away. Although the high volatility and although we saw this crazy dive in Bitcoin. So you also realize that we're getting more and more adoption. At the, at one, at one, on one side, you have institutions such as OneNeck. On the other side, you actually have real adoption coming in terms of online retailers, such as this one. The largest online retailer in Switzerland now starts adopting crypto, and they are called Digitech Galaxus. Guys, if you are from Switzerland, let me know if you recognize this, uh, this online retailer, because obviously I'm not in Switzerland, so I have no idea how big that retailer is, but let, let me know in the comments if this is a truly big retailer as this article tries to tell us that it is the biggest online retailer but anyway they have just added uh, payment uh, options with crypto so you can pay with bitcoin bitcoin cash and so on and so forth so another very important indicator that uh, big retailers are actually on the same page as well and when it comes to crypto when it comes to new technology it's all about getting everyone on the same page how can we get institutions how can we get retailers merchants holders everyone needs to be on the same page and understand the potential and understand the significance of our movement so this is the second very significant flag for me that actually we're getting to a position where we are on the same page. But what was the most interesting yesterday is the fact that Visa is now recruiting engineers to their blockchain team. Because obviously you understand that blockchain and crypto is all about payments. It is all about online payments. It's all about creating a currency that is worldwide for the internet, native currency for the internet. And also you realize that now they have all of these ads all over the internet trying to recruit people to join Visa team and to work with permissionless blockchain technologies. So we're not talking about some kind of, you know, hyperledger closed uh, network th that they're building. When you read their advertisement for their job placement, when, they read their, when you read their recruiting descriptions, they're actually looking for people familiar and that have a deep understanding of permissionless systems, such as Bitcoin. And obviously, Visa is trying to get ahead. They're trying to stay in the game, but also get ahead of their competitors. Because it is just a question of time before all online payments or crypto payments. Why? Because it is much easier, because it is much uh, if more effective. There is less friction. So it's a question of time before we actually see internet adopting cryptocurrencies more and more. It starts with this Swiss retailer, but it is only the first step. You realize that retailers in other countries will take the same approach if they see success in Switzerland. So it's all about the fact that success breeds success. We need a momentum of successes and so visa as a payment provider obviously they don't want to miss out and they're seeing how their business is disappearing in front of their eyes now it's very slow it's very slow but you realize that technologies often follow a hockey stick uh, movement and something that is very slow today in terms of technological progress becomes exponentially bigger and bigger and bigger and faster and faster and faster so once you are too late, you are too late for real. You are too late forever because there's no way you can catch up that exponential growth once it really starts going exponential in terms of adoption, in terms of merchant, in terms of everyone who is involved in this industry. And therefore, obviously, players such as, Bit uh, such as Visa, they want to be in the game. And we can only speculate what they're doing, but because they're working on permissionless systems, because they already have a team of people working on this and you can read on Toshi Times a bit more about the situation that the successful candidate who will be recruited will help Visa to develop new products for Visa to deliver value to fintechs looking to support cryptocurrencies. So to me it looks like they're building some kind of plugin that you can easily have an online store, you can easily just import Visa cryptocurrency plugin and you have all the cryptocurrencies available for you to accept. You can even maybe, what I would really wish, wish from Visa is that it is also integrated with the bookkeeping. That Visa has this plugin for all online stores, they can just simple, with a simple button, 
import the plugin for cryptocurrencies and once people pay it actually also interacts with the bookkeeping software because that would really solve so many issues and make it so much easier for people to adopt this and also they will manage visa's roadmap for cryptocurrency related opportunities the individual who, who is successful in getting the job will not be on their own they will manage a crypto team and report to visas head of crypto so to me this is significant news guys to me this is really significant in terms of the fact that visa wants to be in the game of payments in the game of future payments and you realize that long term there is really no need for visa there's really no need for anyone to be in the middle but just like we read about ibm and how ibm is now working with banks in order to uh, to onboard them on onto their network and their network is actually built on top of stellar and so they're basically a middleman that is supporting their clients because their clients do not know how to just start working with blockchain technology directly the same is with visa they're trying to be a middleman layer on top of bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies this is how i see it. this is how i understand the situation from my point of view because now people still don't really know what a private key is i mean most people have no idea most people have no idea how to actually take bitcoin and interact with uh, their online store how to make bitcoin interact with their online store how to make blockchain interact so therefore there is room for middlemen still in the crypto space to make adoption easier but of course the more people learn the more people understand the actual technology the less need there is for middlemen that make the adoption smoother at the same time we also need to ask ourselves why is visa doing it i mean why would they even get involved in crypto because obviously they have so much business and obviously they have so much investment in uh, the traditional space and the really bitcoin is competing with their core business so why are they even in this space it's just inevitable it, you you cannot sit with your old business forever it will be disrupted by new technology so to me it is just the fact that visa is realizing it is just a question of time guys it is just a question of time before the they will be out of the game if they don't adapt. Just like uh, Blockbuster did not adapt to online, do not, did not adapt to streaming and they were wiped out by Netflix, the same will happen to Visa, MasterCard and others if they don't adapt. So to me, it is just inevitable. And to me, maybe they are understanding the fact that they need to do something. I mean, they need to be in the game. So what is happening in the chat, guys? Because I have one more news left, but I will take a look in the chat. What do you think? Do you agree with this analysis or do you disagree? Uh, because they don't want to become Kodak. Exactly, exactly, Ruslan. You understand my line of thought precisely. Visa releasing their monopoly on the flow of fiat uh, will soon be finished. Well, because online payments in the future will probably be, be crypto. And you hear, for example, Jack Dorsey talking a lot about this. Jack Dorsey is one of the people who is really, really bullish on crypto. And he's the CEO of Twitter. He is also founder of Square and Cash App. A lot of these very big apps that are significant in the fintech space in the US, but also worldwide. He says that, you know, in the future, internet will have its native currency because you will have more access, you will have more people using it more easily. So it is just a question of time, just a question of time. <laughs> Someone says, you look like Brad Pitt. Nice, nice man. Thanks, 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 thanks. Also, something else that is very, very significant is the fact that uh, in this article, what I found very interesting is that Bitcoin is hitting singles, but not home runs. And once again, we're going back to the Van Eck article. They're talking about the fact that we have so many successes in Bitcoin today. I mean, you see Visa, you see this Swiss um, retailer getting crypto payments. All of these very positive things are happening, but they are not home runs. So this is what the uh, director for digital asset strategy at Van Eck is saying, that rather than expecting a decisive breakthrough or big home run for cryptocurrencies in 2019, look for industry to continue hitting number of singles with incremental by, but major hits. So he's basically saying, we have no mind-blowing news that basically Basically, you know, the US adopts Bitcoin as uh, their national currency. That would truly be mind blowing. But that would also be unicorn land. We, we would have to live in unicorn land. And guys, although 
I want to go to unicorn land. We're not living in unicorn land. We're living in the real world. And obviously, the US will not come out and say, hey, we're now adopting crypto as our national currency. That would be mind blowing. But still, you have so many, and that would also be a home run if some country said that. But we have so many singles. So for example, you see we have a square cash app, Bitcoin integration. You have states like Ohio accepting Bitcoin for taxes. You have Samsung new phone with crypto integration. You see Robinhood Bit license in New York. You see this Swiss retailer in Switzerland, biggest retailer in Switzerland uh, accepting crypto. You see uh, the expansion of Bitcoin derivatives, Nasdaq collaboration, Swiss crypto, I mean, so many different things. And they all add up. They all add up. It might be, uh, it might seem like not very significant, but if you have every day something coming out, every day we have a small win, every day there is something significant uh, that, that is released that is announced, but not that significant that everyone's mind is blown. But still, you have all of this news uh, coming and coming and coming and coming. And at the end of the day, we one day wake up in an industry that is mature, that is well adopted. And suddenly we don't even need the home run. We don't even need that home run anymore because we have incrementally achieved that level by working hard, by being active, by building, by making connections and by truly be being at the epicenter of the crypto revolution. Because this is what happens when you are at the epicenter. You have so many possibilities. Imagine, for example, Visa. They are now recruiting heavily for their crypto positions. They're now recruiting heavily for their crypto team. And you understand that uh, when you are working in crypto, you are very rare. There, is not many, there are not many people, not many engineers who understand cryptocurrencies. And I know that because I come from engineering. I worked at Ericsson here in Sweden for several years. And I can assure you that engineers that were way smarter than I am because they were way older, they had way more experience, they had zero knowledge about crypto. They had zero knowledge about smart contracts. So if you just know a bit of crypto, you are passionate, you know what you're talking about, you are credible, you have been educated, you will get these jobs way, way easier. You understand when there is a new industry, there is a new space, a new a, a, a whole new space building up from scratch. There are so many opportunities. And to reach the same opportunities in the traditional space, it would take you like 15 years of hard work, of grind, of being in this corporate ladder. It would take you so many years. In crypto, it can happen this quickly. It can happen this quickly because you are very rare if you know what you're talking about. And guys, if you want to learn more about this, join the webinar because the webinar will be all about how you can get involved in crypto for real, how you can skip all of the career ladder steps, just remove all of them and be at the top of the career ladder food chain, however you want to call it, because it's really time. Also, we will be talking about how to make money in crypto without making risky investments and how to make money in a bear market. So check the link in the description, free webinar, completely free. You, ca you, you cannot really miss out. It will be very irresponsible if you miss out, if you still haven't participated. Also, we have this tax uh, lecture also in the description. Just set the reminder on because you need to know this. Whatever country you're living in, it is tax season and you need to know all the knowledge because IRS is having new methods and new techniques that they're using and you need to know them to stay compliant. Anyway, guys, what is happening in the chat? I love the chat, man. Ch chat is always crazy. Love your passion. Greetings from Berlin. Nice, nice, Christian. Greetings from Stockholm to Berlin. Geil. It's, this is like cool in, in German. You see, I've been reading some German. I, I understand some German, but I am not speaking German. Ein bisschen ich spreche Deutsch, but um, I'm better at reading. Are you sure Ivan on take? Uh, I'm 100% sure Lord of Tubelight, whatever you're asking me about. If you're asking the Academy, I'm 100% sure. Uh, crypto Welt auch, uh, see, Crypto World also here. You see, I I'm very good at German. I know all the words. I, I know the best words, as Donald Trump would say. <laughs> Trust me, I, I know the best words in German, okay? Ivan, can you tell us a, a little about the Badger Wallet and its integration? I haven't used it. I, I need to check out Badger Wallet. I haven't used it. 
Uh, Bitcoin handles settlement and will replace central bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, there is a knowledge gap. You need to understand that unbanked, there is still a knowledge gap. And middlemen such as Visa will try to make some money out of it and will try to be in the game. I agree with your analysis, but how will Visa make money if they make a cryptocurrency? So I don't think they are necessarily making a cryptocurrency. I mean, it could be, but to me, it looks like they're actually building on top of Bitcoin or on top of other public um, uh, public currencies because they're saying that, you know, you will be develop new products for Visa to deliver value for fintech looking to support cryptocurrencies. So to me, it's like they are providing services to companies and people who want to be in the crypto space and maybe accept crypto payments. Uh, next, uh, oh, that, that is interesting. I, I think, guys, when it comes to initial exchange offerings, I do think they are quite interesting because you realize that, I mean, for some reason, those projects are still raising a lot of money. Those projects are still successful in their fund, uh, fundraising. And actually, I, uh, I included a link in the description for an article, but I just didn't have time to cover it. But le let's just take a look, because when you look at initial exchange offerings, I mean, Binance is really killing it with all of their ICOs. Basically, Binance Launchpad hosts its third ICO with Seller Network, raising four million. And basically, an initial exchange offering is like an ICO, but it is hosted by an exchange. So it is more safe for you as an investor and for me as an investor. Now, is it 100% safe? Absolutely not. Because exchanges can be corrupt, exchanges can have insider trading. There are so many crazy things that can happen. But is it more safe than just investing in random naked ICOs? Absolutely. It is absolutely more safe. Because at least you have some requirements to be on Binance Launchpad. And Binance will have to answer if there is something extremely shady going on in the ICOs they list on Binance Launchpad. So this is something that I'm studying myself right now. I think I will do a bigger episode on that because initial exchange offerings is a new phenomenon that is actually gaining some momentum. And, um, and more and more exchanges are actually coming out with their own platforms for, for uh, exchange offerings. Okay, guys, let, let's take a few more questions. Ivan, can you tell me a little about your plans for this channel? Uh, Will, it all depends on where the industry goes, but something that we're extremely committed to is our academy. So if you haven't, check out academy.ivantech.com. We are releasing one course per month. And I can tell you that there will be one new course every month for the entire year. And you know that we just released our crypto algo trading course last, um, uh, uh, last month. And we basically show you how to build automated bots. And we have all of these courses already. The next course will be about Bitcoin programming. We will be actually building uh, some smart contracts on Bitcoin. Very simple. We will be using the programming language script and we will be scripting Bitcoin. Very exciting stuff coming out in just 10 days. So go to academy.ivantech.com and enroll. And of course, you have all of these other courses like smart contract programming, which is your programming from scratch. So that is for sure. But when it comes to what kind of content, man, who knows? It's all about where the crypto goes. <laughs> so it's all about being uh, being flexible, being adaptive. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed doing this. It is really maybe one of the best moments of the day that I'm here. And I can tell you, say, tell you that I'm getting so pumped. I'm get, getting all of the energy from you guys in the chat. I really enjoy doing this because obviously I wouldn't be doing it every day at 8 a.m. Central European time. As... I, like an atomic clock every day if I didn't think it was fun. So it's been my pleasure to be here with you. Ruslan is writing, I'm starting today algo trading course. Very, very nice. Will, thanks Ivan, have a great day. Everyone, have a great day. Everyone, be sure to smash the like if you haven't. And also, by the way, guys, smash that bell. I, th I think I will start promoting the bell more than the, than the like because you, you need to smash the bell so you get notifications. Okay, guys, have a great day. Have a great, what is it, Wednesday? And goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye.